Madam President, there's an old saying among Texas trial lawyers. If you have the facts, you bang the facts. If you have the law, you bang the law. If you don't have either one, you bang the table. We've seen a whole lot of table banging right here on this floor. The senator from Colorado spent a great deal of time yelling, spent a great deal of time attacking me personally. He did at one point briefly rise to defense of my father. I appreciate that gesture. But he spent a lot of time yelling. I will say in my time in the Senate, I don't believe I have ever bellowed or yelled at one of my colleagues on the Senate floor, and I hope that in my time before me that I don't ever do that. I think we should discuss issues and substance and facts and not simply scream and yell at each other. So let's go over some of the facts. In the senator from Colorado's angry speech, he did not dispute, number one, that he and every other Senate Democrat in 2013 voted for 350 miles of border wall. That's a fact. He has voted for 350 miles of border wall, as did every other Democrat in this chamber at that time. Number two, he did not dispute that in December of last year, the then Republican House of Representatives voted to fund the government, to fund the entirety of the government, and to secure the border. And the senator from Colorado, and I believe every other Democrat, filibustered that bill and caused the shutdown. Madam President, I voted to take up that bill. You voted to take up that bill. Had we taken up the bill, had we simply passed the bill, the House of Representatives had passed, funding the government and securing the border, the government would never have shut down. And so it takes some degree of uh, chutzpah to stand up after filibustering funding for the government, as the Democrats did, and to blame the shutdown on the opposing party. The senator from Colorado did not dispute the Republican House voted to fund the government, and he and his Democratic colleagues filibustered that, which caused the shutdown. And number three, the senator from Colorado did not dispute that the stated reason the Democrats filibustered that bill is because it authorized the funding of 234 miles of wall. Now, I have to say, Madam President, I find it amusing. A new adjective has creeped in. It's now not 234 miles of wall. It's medieval wall. I, I don't know if there's something in there that has a moat and has catapults and they're throwing burning tar. Medieval wall now. It's kind of an odd thing. It, it, it does raise the question, well, if walls are medieval, why did the senator from Colorado and every other Democrat in 2013 vote for 350 miles of medieval wall? It, it, to the extent walls are medieval, they presumably were medieval in 2013 just as much as they are now. You know, the president has a good observation. He said, I'll tell you something else that's medieval, the wheel. There's a reason the wheel is medieval, because it rolls things and it works. Walls are effective. Unlike the senator from Colorado, I live in a border state. We have 1,200 miles of border. I have spent a great deal of time down at the border with Border Patrol agents. We have miles and miles of wall right now that are working. I've been to those walls, not once, not twice, but over and over and over again. One of the rich things about this chamber is senators from states nowhere near the border presume to lecture border states about what it's like on the border and what works securing the border. Walls are effective, and I'll tell you, every single Border Patrol agent, I've asked that. And I have asked dozens, probably hundreds of Border Patrol agents, are walls effective? Unquestionably, they say yes. Now, let's not, let's not construct a straw man. Walls aren't the only thing. You need technology. You need boots on the ground. You need all sorts of other tools, but walls the critical point in intercepting someone crossing over illegally is the time between detection and interception. And what a wall does is slows down the traffickers to give the Border Patrol time to intercept them. And by the way, we've seen it over and over again in San Diego when they built the wall, the illegal traffic plummeted. In El Paso when they built the wall, the illegal traffic plummeted. But now the Democrats, their position 
It's not substantive. They voted for 350 miles of wall. So why are they shutting the government down over 234 miles of wall? It's not substantive. It's political. Okay, we get they hate Donald Trump. If anyone in America had missed that point, that they really, really, really don't like this man, their yelling and screaming and bellowing has made that abundantly clear. But just because you hate somebody doesn't mean you should shut the government down. I voted to keep this government open right now today. The Democrats are filibustering funding for the government. Let me tell you something else the senator from Colorado didn't dispute. We had a whole colloquy with the senator from Louisiana, the senator from Mississippi, the senator from Alaska about funding the Coast Guard. Did you notice, Madam President, in that entire bellowing speech, the words Coast Guard were never uttered? Not once. What Senator Kennedy asked this body to do was pass a clean bill to pay the paychecks of the Coast Guard. Senator Kennedy's bill doesn't mention a wall, whether you like one or not, doesn't mention a medieval wall or any other kind of wall. It simply says, pay the Coast Guard, yes, no. Every Republican agrees, pay the Coast Guard right now. It's not fair to treat the Coast Guard differently than we're treating the Army and Navy and Marines and Air Force. The Senator from Colorado didn't address that because it is indisputable, it is a fact that the reason that didn't pass right now is because the Democratic leader stood up and made an objection. And by implication, every Democratic senator presumably agrees with it. The fact that the senator from Colorado didn't say, yes, we should fund the Coast Guard, and you know what? My leader was wrong when he held the paychecks of the Coast Guard men and women hostage because he wants to win a political fight with the president. And by the way, I would note to the senator of Colorado, it's not the end of the world to stand up to your party's leader. Some of us have a history of having done so in the past. We're now in the longest government shutdown in history. This shutdown needs to end. The American people want it to end. But we also need to secure the border. And Madam President, I have to say the contrast between the two parties it could not be clearer. The president has repeatedly said he wants to negotiate and he wants to compromise. He said he's willing to meet in the middle. He hasn't insisted on every mile of border wall he asked for. He hasn't insisted on every single dollar of border security. He said, let's meet and compromise. Republicans on this side of the chamber have said, let's compromise in the middle. In the position of Senate Democrats, they will not negotiate, they will not compromise, period. So their position, how many miles of wall can be built? Zero. They're not to one yet. When it comes to negotiating, their position is not an inch of wall can be built, even though we, the Democrats, already voted for 350 miles of it. Why? Because Donald Trump's president. That is an extreme and radical position. And look, I understand folks watching at home, it's hard to tell. You're, you're reading the news, it seems like both parties are bickering. It's hard to tell what's happening, particularly because on the, on the Senate floor, there's a lot of procedural mumbo jumbo. If you want to understand what's going on, the exchange between Senator Kennedy and Senator Schumer illustrates it all. Senator Kennedy's bill did one thing and one thing only. It paid the salaries of the men and women of the Coast Guard. It didn't touch any other issue. Every Republican agrees with that bill. And the Democrats objected and said, we will not pay the Coast Guard. Had they not objected, we could put that bill on the president's desk today and they could get their paychecks right now. That is emblematic of the approach of Senate Democrats. And so, you know, when the senator from Colorado stopped screaming at me, he then engaged in a bit of historical retrospective about the great framers of our Constitution that I enjoyed and that I very much agree with. I am someone who spent a lifetime devoted to the Constitution. I am inspired 
by the framers who gave us this extraordinary democratic republic. The senator from Colorado called for members of this body to aspire to be more like this men and women that gave us this country, gave us this republic if you can keep it, as Benjamin Franklin put it. And I concur with that, and what I would urge the senator from Colorado is to reach out to his Democratic colleagues and counsel compromise. I am urging my colleagues on this side to do the same, and the difference is the Republicans are willing to compromise, have offered to compromise, and in fact, just now sought to pay the Coast Guard, and the Democratic position is no, 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 we object. That is partisan, it is extreme, and it is not behavior. That would bring pride to the framers of our Constitution. I hope that this body can do better. I yield the floor. President.